But here's what I want to, I want to encourage guys to see. If they can get in their mind what a healthy model looks like, for relationship and what a healthy woman brings to the table who has a sincere desire to nurture. Because I believe you guys, what we deal with guys today is who have a sincere desire to want to be part of a, a contributing part of a woman's life. They have a good heart. They want to give. They just want it returned to them. They want to put out and give something to a woman who will give it back to them. And so quickly what you learn, if you follow chemistry between people, there's a lot of subconscious things that, that create that connection. You learn trust, which is essential. So you have a right person to put your energy out. And when they bring it back, it's interesting how that combination quickly brings two people to feel like they've just known each other forever. And it's this blending into that. And where you can bring your full strength, she can bring her full nurturing, and it completes the cycle in a way that's very healthy. There is no weakness in the feminine. In fact, there's a part of the masculine that needs the feminine to trigger it. Welcome to Becoming Fearless. We, we haven't done a podcast episode in a while, and we're going to start doing it more and more, but this is our new podcast setup. Uh, compliments of the handsome Cosman that's sitting behind the camera back here. And uh, <laughs> I'm sitting here with Mark Edward Davis, who is breaking in the new equipment with me. Yeah, this and is great. I'm honored to uh, to be the inaugural uh, episode here and using this. You don't want to touch it. Looks no dust on it. It's like... Yeah. All right off the shelf. A lot of colors over here. Beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see it. Star trek Yeah. So uh, Mark is here because, uh, well, A, he's visiting me here. In yeah. Buc I'm in Bucharest, Romania. He's visiting me. Um, came out just to hang out for a couple days. Totally. But he's going to be speaking at the Integrated Man Summit the first weekend in December. And if you haven't got your tickets, check it out. Make sure to hit the link in the video. Get your tickets because it's going to be an amazing uh, show. We got a... Uh, we got uh, Dr. Robert Glover, who's, who's a great friend My of mentor yours. and friend, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, and you guys know I'm always recommending No More Mr. Nice Guy. He's had a huge influence on my life. He's going to be speaking at the event along with yourself. Yeah. Um, all the fearless coaches are going to be speaking. Uh, and and just so you guys know, it's not an event where we have 50 million speakers. We have a few really good speakers that speak every day of the event right. over and over, going deeper into the topics you want to hear about. You know, so on the breaks, you talk to them, you tell them, I love this and I love that. And the next day, he, he'll go, you know what, I'm going to go more into that. Yeah. Let's go deeper with that. Let's talk more about that rather than having notes from 50 million people that blow your brain out because you can't keep track of it all by the end of the yeah. weekend. So, uh, no, so I, I love it. Well, I mean, we can go in more of my background for a minute, but I wanted to touch on the, the Glover thing because it is, it is a very personal relationship with me. I went through, um, uh, about a year and a half, uh, program certification program to be a therapist with him. And I so respect his methods and his teaching. But one of the things you do is you, you go facilitate sessions, you know, weekend intensives with guys. And in fact, I'm doing another one in Puerto Vallarta coming up. In I did not know any of this weeks. about you. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know you'd see trained with them directly. Like I did. That. I That's did. Fascinating. And then of course, during the process, you can't help spend time with somebody you don't become their friend. And I was able to spend a week there and, uh, hang out with his family and teach his kid a little guitar. And so we just, I, I, I mean, I don't want to say I have a man crush on this guy, but pretty damn close, you know, mm -hmm. and he's brilliant. He thinks like, like I do in a lot of ways, or I do like him. Um, but one of the things I love about the way he does uh, an intensive for men is he'll start off with uh, flipping a, a pad of paper and go, okay, guys, let's talk about what you guys need to hear. So the topic may have been this, but he always opens up with the, you know, you guys need to hear more about dealing with, you know, you breaking away from your mom, you, you know, break away from an ex, healing this, you know, you want to deal with whatever. And so that'll be the format for the weekend. And he's that, you know, I mean, how many 30, 40 years of experience he can build a weekend based on what the guys here. But what I love about what you're creating with, you know, the, the, the summit you invited me to be a part of is that we get to be part of the entire weekend experience. We're not a drop in speaker. Right. We're integrated with the guys. We're right. going to help. We're going to listen. So all of a sudden, like we start off on this stuff with, you know, with, with the masculine journey, you know, some of the stuff that guys, you know, who are in my circle, they love to hear my stuff on the masculine journey um, or the relationship stuff, you know, that I've done. And then we may find out they want to go deeper into their area and we could do that. 
See, I haven't really said what I, I kind of introduced Glover, and I haven't really said what, what Mark do. does. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> and uh, as he's talking right now, I'm, you're probably all going, "Okay, who is this guy?" It's awesome. He trained with Glover, but what does that mean? Um, he's uh, Mark has been running a business called Dream Connections for how many years now? A long time, almost ten, yeah. almost ten years, and he is one of the few legitimate actual uh, introduction services for uh, men that want to marry women Marriage. overseas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thailand, uh, Colombia, and Ukraine, he, he introduces. And he literally has a vetting process for the women to make sure that they're serious about and committed to really finding the right man. He has a process for making sure that he matches the couples well. He puts you guys through a process to make sure you're ready. And it's a, it's a whole, uh, an event, like a huge event you put people through. And then they, they have a courting, almost like a courting ritual yeah. You put them through, and you have over how many marriages now? Can you give me? Yeah, we're over three hundred married and uh, less than two percent divorced, and it's it's not it's with work, but it's like it's neat to see the results. When you think about like I think California's got over fifty percent divorce. Yeah, and you've got less than two percent divorce. Yeah, uh, that's that's pretty insane. Well, and, and I want to share that it's 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 something I think that um, you know the world needs to understand. We discovered something unique, and it's this mix between. Uh, the Western culture, the Western guys, and and a little bit the the other ones overseas, and and why this fit works and it changes the paradigm for relationships. Yeah, and I, that that brings up a question I've never asked you: What's the divorce rate in, uh, let's say, Ukraine or Colombia? It's high. They're so, very high. So it's high there and it's high in the U.S. Yes. But you put the two together and it seems to work. Yeah, it, well, it is because you understand um, in in all these places we go to, and I've had to do a lot of studies in culture and in 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 the statistics and dynamics. If you go to Ukraine, for example, um, the guys are really there's there's an overabundance number of women. So there's statistically there's four million and an overabundance of gorgeous women. Gorgeous women, by the way, and the the they're they're very attentive to their fashion. Very few are overweight, you know, and they're trying to fight to get the guys because there are fewer men than women. But that's really not the statistic. Yeah, there are 4 million more women than men, but the real statistic that sways it is the fact that the guys don't want to get married. The guys will... I've, I've interviewed a sailor who goes, I get a different girlfriend every month. They're all hot. Why would I want to settle down? It just cost me money. And so all women want the white picket fence. You know, they want a married situation. So when I bring a guy from the West who wants to come to Colombia or Thailand or, or Ukraine and meet one of these ladies who is trying to find a life partner, you know, um, and, and they believe our company, that we filter our guys and we interview them as well so that they are coming from marriage. It's like the union, it, it, it's, I mean, there's still work to be done. But honestly, when you get two people in the same room who have the same agenda, they're looking for the same thing in life, It's then you're just looking at chemistry, you know, who, um, who really connects with who. And, and then we just help them facilitate the courting process. And then you have a process where they come in the room and they can meet how many women in one day. Oh, it's crazy. Okay, so, so they have how many instant dates, right? Yeah, well, that's it. And you don't have to do that work. Um, so it basically, the the, the so you have two, this, you have X amount of this massive amount of instant dates in one yeah, day or yeah. over a weekend with women that are like minded is kind of the idea Correct. behind what you're doing. Right. Yeah, this is interesting. Okay. Well, and again, what I do is we don't do online dating, so you have to come meet people in person. And so you'll have 15, 20 guys come um, for a nine-day experience, tour experience. And the first day they meet their nine associate, days, it's a romance coach, you know, so a gorgeous young lady from the area who knows ladies, they can read them. Um, and she becomes your translator and assistant. The next day you start meeting the ladies. So the guys over two days in this sort of a hybrid speed dating format we created where they'll spend 15 minutes at a table with about four ladies just chatting, not trying to date them, just see if there's something that, that connects. And you say, I, you know, I'd like to spend another hour with her. Let's see where it goes. And and you meet over the course of those two days, a hundred ladies, you know, and out of those you may find 15 of them that are like, wow. you know, and these, So 15% approximately. Yeah, and then out of those you'll probably start dating a top six. And, you know, by then... What you've done is so refined this to everything you're looking for, you know, that guys rarely date more than eight because they're like, it's just super wow, you know, and then they huh. start just seeing where, where the mutual connection hits. And by the end of our, in the nine days, 80% of our guys will have started a relationship with somebody they met. So, so when I'm looking at this, and, and this, this industry has a bad rep, by the way. So, Huge. I um, mean, it's dark. It's the reason I'm in it is because... The reputation was so bad, and people they call you it. You get a lot of women who are just uh, looking to marry men with money, and uh, they're not really interested. Well, and in, you get guys going over there just for sex tourism, yeah. too. Yeah, and then that's and it's an all kind of 
you got a mess. So he's yeah. he's hit one of his big things, and you tell me is mm-hmm. to f- find serious people and weed out the people that aren't serious, like the women that are just gold diggers that yeah. are just looking to take your money or find an American right. man to be married to. He. Yeah, you have some type of psychological process to figure that out, right? Well, it, it, there's a series of interviews we go through, and we've been doing this for a long time, so it's it's not hard. And good people know good people. We don't advertise, you know, for ladies to come join our agency, um, but it's like somebody knows somebody who married, you know, my friend. You, we've got over a hundred ladies I've interviewed on our website. Why are you here? What are you looking for? How do you see relationship dynamics? And that's really interesting to hear how they see it differently. But most all of them will say, "Yeah, my friend got married to somebody," and so. You know, they know why they're coming. Well, let, let's play with these numbers for a bit, because I, I never thought of this before. And just when you said it, it popped into my head. Okay, let's say I go out to, let's say you're serious for getting married. Right. Uh, and then I go out and I, I start approaching women on the street and I pick a city with the women I like. I approach 100 women. That's going to take time. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many of those women are going to be taken, uh, not interested in marriage, uh, not inter- not in a hurry somewhere? Mm-hmm. Their, their, their mind just isn't focused in that direction. Um, and so how much time, how much energy is that going to take? Now you come to something like you're talking about, you're the guy's seriously interested in marriage. He's got a like-minded, every woman's been pre-screened to be serious. They're in the room. They're already open to the idea with you. Right. So now you've got a hundred approaches of warm oh, leads in a sense. I don't like that term, but <laughs> no, they're, they're good pro- prospects for yeah. a relationship. It, and, it is a prospect. And so, and then, so I can see where you would find 15 women you could be interested in, in that, in that group. And then you start weeding it down, and and, uh, and it's and it's a dating process from there, getting yeah. to know each one. Um, so, so this is fascinating. So, what do you think makes this combination of American man and Eastern European Colombian Thailand? What, what makes them work together? Like, what is it about the? We talk a lot about polarity, right? Yeah. And there's this polarity there, right? And there's something going on in that. Well, there's there's um, three dynamics, and first of all. One of the things that um, it solves is a huge problem, I think, in the West. You want to talk about why we have a 50% divorce rate, you know, in the Western cultures in general. And I know people can talk about, okay, is that first marriage or second marriages? But generally people know it's not as successful as what I'm mm. describing. So let's leave it at that. But one of the reasons is because we have this horrible misperception of how relationships should work, that they're in negotiation. And, and by that, it's like if you were, everybody has this euphoric state when they first meet where they're, they're in honeymoon, they're excited, they don't care, nothing cares. You, you could wake up with your dirty clothes on the ground, you could smell terrible, they don't care. They want to snuggle you and kiss you and hug you. Nobody cares. They work it out, right? Mm-hmm. And if they say something, you don't take it personally, you go for you, honey, sure, no problem. What's cute now becomes annoying later. It does. But, but it, it doesn't have to. It's transitional. But there is a point where at some point around months 7 to 12, there's some crash, in, in relationship, some conflict where you're like, oh my God, and you start thinking, you know, was this a mistake? I mean, there's there's a moment. Everybody's going to have it. Um, and and so the problem is in the West, what you typically do is you go in for this counseling and the counselor process in the West is, uh, you know, it's like, okay, now, why don't you describe to him how you see your problem? You know, and, and why don't you say it back to her so she feels heard and then you do this. Can you understand that now? What now? Would you could you do this for him? That would be okay. And could you do this for? All right, you guys okay? All right, good. Like this compromise. It, it's but it's but it comes across like a business negotiation. And the yeah. problem is that you can't keep up everything forever. And as soon as one person breaks it down, the other feels like I think well, it was data that talks about that compromises the death of relationship because it kills polarity. Not only does it kill polarity, but it changes it from something romantic to something negotiated. Yeah, you do that in business, not in romance. Yeah, and and the whole purpose is romance. Well, but you both have to go into you have to. Like she has to decrease her feminine to do that. Do they do these negotiations? Yes, and, and she becomes in a combative mode. Yeah, and and then it's a battle. And of then power. you're compromising your masculine, and nobody is a nobody's polarizing. Yeah, that's what. But this is the way it is, and and, and if you go and you ask uh, the average person on the street, which isn't your guys, your guys are educated. But the average person on the street you say, "What's a formula for a good relationship?" And they say, "Oh, it's a 50-50 deal, or or a more self sacrificing." No, it's a hundred hundred. Uh, you know, it, it's the whole idea that. The, and this, and when I say this to people out loud, they, they always cringe. And I say, so we uh, we have two and a half kids. We have our minivan because it's practical. We have our date night on Friday night. And you pick up the kids uh, Thursday. Uh, I pick up the kids Wednesday. Yeah. And it's all this compromise to the point that, you're, yeah, you're now in a business deal. You are. You're negotiated roommates. Um, 
So let me explain the difference. So let's turn that around now, why this is different, what we've learned. There's three basic components, why these international relationships um, work so well. And the first one is, and, and I got the, I, this is affirmed by um, a study. My son has actually got a PhD in family counseling psychology. He sent me some, dad, I got this article you got to read. There was a study done about these multinational couples. And one of the things they discovered that gave them an advantage is the fact that there is no pretense. There's no social pretext for an expectation of how their relationship should go. You know, so if you got somebody, you know, here, here we're in Romania, right? You have somebody from Romania marrying somebody from Canada. What is that supposed to look like? I don't know. Yeah. Guess what? We got to talk about it. We got, but the point, the beauty of it is, is while they're deciding how we should be, because you have to, you can't say, well, my family would do this. Well, so what? You're Canadian. That's not how we do it. You end up having a healthy conversation that everybody should have. But you talk about at peak state when you're in honeymoon. You talk about what is what do we love about us? And a lot of times the couples will come up with their own vocabulary. They don't want to even use the word marriage because not a lot of people have a good example of even what marriage looks like. What we have is so cool. I don't even want to call it marriage, right? And, and so they come up with their own vocabulary. They define what they are. They describe it. And they do it at peak state. And the beauty of that is if you ever get off from it, you know what it looks like when it's great. And it's easier to return to that. And so the first thing is you, you, that's the reason these relationships work is one, there's no cultural expectation that says my mama did this i did this this is how we should be because they're both coming from different cultures right yeah so it resets everything that's interesting um you also said something the other day when we were walking and talking and you were talking about how men really want to be the woman's hero they want mm -hmm. to be the masculine they want to take care of you they want to love you they want to they want to take care of you and protect you and pro and really provide and they what they really want in return is for you to believe in them and nurture them in that pro and, and be the nurturing element the feminine in that process i don't see that a lot in, in western culture mm -hmm. um and uh what i find is when i come over to these other cultures women really want that too they want to be they want to believe in the man mm -hmm. they want him to be her hero and they want to tell him how amazing he is for it which it makes him want to do it more and vice mm -hmm. versa they want to be his feminine and they want to nurture him, which in the Western culture, I'm sorry, but the feminine is seen as for some reason weak. And so everybody wants to compete to be the masculine and it just doesn't work. And I'm, you know, I don't usually say it that way, but I see a lot of that. It doesn't, you know, you're right. And um, we don't have to apologize for this because we see what actually works with real people. Yeah. You know, when I, when I talk about, you know, and at the, when we do the weekend, come in Miami and I'll tell you the other two aspects to the relationship thing, but I want to go into this for a while. You and I talked about this. The feminine is very powerful, by the way. It's not weak. I no. wanted to add that in, by the way. The, the feminine has an incredible uh, power. And, and I guess the best way to describe it is from that article I was talking about, is that um, over time, you know, men have been the trailblazers. And they've had to be. I mean, you think yeah. more than 200 years ago, you couldn't dial 911. You know, you had to physically be prepared to pr pr protect your family. Um, typically the provider was the man in terms of he had to go do the commerce, he had to hunt, whatever the case was. He had to physically provide for his family. He had to go out and risk his life on a regular basis with and knowing he's out in the middle of the woods hunting that there's no medical care readily available if he gets hurt. He's on his own. Yeah. And and they would trailblaze, you know, they they blazed the cities, they built the you know, the the architects, all of these things that the, the men created. Now we've created a safe place. For women where they can dial 911 where they they can bargain and buy houses they can make money they can do whatever they want and so therefore now thank you men for our our mick lifestyles and and it, it it's changed the lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> right you know yeah. what i'm saying though right i so, want a t-shirt thank you for my mick lifestyle <laughs> it'd be awesome yeah but you know it's it's put us where we are today you know the brother and brothers watching this, we put in this place where then what is the place for the 21st century man? Where's our value? And the aching cry of the heart for the man is still to be that woman's hero. And there's, I, and, and if women could understand this, you talk about a woman's power. It's super true, by the way. A woman's power, if she could come up to you and, and just say, honey, I want to let you know I believe in you. 
you are my hero. Go do it. Go do it. I believe in you. Man, it just awakens something. You tell a story about that with your wife that I've never forgot. You know, when you when everything went south for south, you, right? Yeah. And then she said, what did she say to you? I mean, you tell the story where she took up the reins. And, and yeah, not, absolutely. Well, not the reins, but she took up the, the financial responsibility right. so you could. I mean, you tell that story. Well, this is, you know, and this is where you change the dynamics with the international relationships, right? right. So she's Ukrainian, and um, the biggest value for her was to find this relationship more than money families first and that's one of the traditional value things we love about these cultures they put the relationship and family above money in these things so at one point i had a five thousand square foot house i had seven investment properties i drove a jaguar and i bring this woman here into america to this lifestyle which she's like wow i made it yeah well no she was actually it irritated her she's the, everything was too perfect she says she used to joke she wanted to kick some trash cans over knock stuff in the street just to unperfect it you know yeah. and, and she felt like she moved into a museum so but at the time when the 08 crash happened i lost my business went through bankruptcy and uh lost really lost everything the only choice we had was to move into my parents condo in anaheim which is a dark story. Yeah. By the way, I used to work in Anaheim. We used to call it the. Uh, sorry if you live in Anaheim. We we used to jokingly really back in sorry the. Uh, in it was back in the late '80s, early '90s. We called it the armpit of Orange County, mm -hmm. um, Anaheim, and it's just the area I was in. I mean, there were streets mm -hmm. filled with hookers, and yeah. and you'd walk down the street, you could count the hookers, like thirty hookers walking up and down the street, and you would see the drug dealers and yeah. it was it was in bad shape back then and i know when you moved there it was a little better maybe because mm -hmm. you don't have you didn't have they cleaned a lot of that up but it's still there behind the scenes it just yeah. wasn't on the surface anymore it's still a drug it's still a druggy area it's not pretty um i survived by getting season pass to disneyland and made that my second office yeah. of doing my laptop in there into the to the so you go into this california perf walk into this perfect, perfect land. world yeah <laughs> so i'd sit there in the cafe in the california grand hotel and they'd just bring me coffee and i'd work and i was like i was heard the, yeah the neighborhood away. around disneyland you have to be kind of careful with the pickpockets and people that prey on the tourists yeah but then you once you're in disneyland you're, you're okay. covered you're good but anyway the the story you're trying to get to which is really valuable is that you know my wife's perspective is different she, she you know she thought that uh, you know money comes and you know, she goes, that's not the point. She found the treasure, which was the relationship. Well, she had really become comfortable with, because uh, in Ukraine, they, they live on very little money. And they're and, good with it. And But they but they have a lot of love. Well, it depends on the family, but they have a lot of love, right? Well, but again, the, the marriage rates are failure there, because again, the, the guys don't oh, stick. Right. They cheat. They move on. They don't provide. So the women always have to provide for themselves. Well, I spent a lot of time in Ukraine, and, and, and not as much as you, but when I go there, I'm in the different scene, because yeah. my, my buddy... And it's always a party scene. So I see all the Ukrainian girls that are just like, I just want to party and hang out all night. And they're not the marriage mind. Although I've hung out with a few marriage minded ones that were, and it was like, there was a dichotomy. Mm -hmm. I go out with these girls that want to dance and party all night and take drugs. And I'm like, it's not really my scene, but I'm hanging out with my buddy. And, mm -hmm. and then I go out and I'd go meet another girl during the day. And then it's like, let's take a short walk in the park and get to know each other. I'm all about family and kids. And I want to understand you as a man. And yeah. There's this, and I was like, there was nothing in between. Yeah, it's it, you're right, but again, it, like, there you were in Kiev too. It's a big, yeah. the big city, and Odessa is very similar. And there's the party life there, and the young crowd. There is a young crowd that does that, but even among the young crowds, you know, there's a lot of them that, that want to be married. They want to settle down. Yeah, uh, I saw I'd, that. I'd say the majority actually do. Uh, it's a luxury to be able to have the kind of lifestyle, you know, with these ladies that you were talking about. Um, where was I? Oh, my story. So anyway, after I lost everything, moved to Anaheim. Um, I, know, I sorry, I, I don't mean to direct misdirect. No, yeah. it, hey, I will. I, I, I've over the years we've trained ourselves to come back. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all. Don't worry about it. Take it anywhere you want. Um, but the thing that I think that was unique about the story was her perspective that helped me get through. Because she says, "What are you talking about? Money doesn't matter. It'll come. It'll come. You'll you'll make it again." But we have each other. So she goes, "Look, and, and, you know, and my mother. God bless my mother, mom. If you're watching this, I apologize. But honestly, mom, seriously, she wanted me to go get one of those jobs at the airport. The bag. What do they go? TSA. TSA yeah. Or, she goes, you know, TSA is hiring, baggage. right? I'm just going like. And, you mean and, this is after the crash? After the crash, right? But after my bankruptcy, the she's guy, going, guy's driving a Jaguar and, and is worth a fortune, and now he works for the TSA. <laughs> That's where my mom wanted. Just get a job, honey. It's okay." You, your subconscious would never have been happy with oh, you miserable. after living that miserable. lifestyle. Yeah, no offense to guys who work for TSA. It's okay, but it's just my calling was entrepreneurship. Well, it, you know, it, it's this whole thing that once you've gone to a certain level, it's hard to, it's really hard, you know, to accept that. That Because I used to be really poor and struggled and all that. Mm -hmm. But now I look back on the, the old me and that, that guy's gone. Yeah. You know? I don't, I'm, that's not who I am anymore. That's who I was then. 
No, but you know, and let me camp on that for a quick second. Then I'll finish coming around the mountain. But uh, you know, I have a, a one old guy in LA who's a UPS driver and a uh, black guy, and he he wanted a Colombian wife. Came and found her, and they're it's they're the cutest family in the world. I get to go. They came to nice. Vegas to do their wedding and stuff, and. But, I mean, they're just so happy. So, I mean, you know, and, and he doesn't want to do anything more in life. He's got a great life. He gets to live in Southern California. He's got his Colombian wife, and she brought, the, you know, the kids with him. So it's this instant family package. So, you know, I'm just, don't be offended if I said TSA or if you're a UPS driver. You can have a happy life. You pick what you want. But, for, you know, for me, you know, it was it was my wife knew that my calling was. Well, I 100% agree. Some awesome. guys are all of my dad is all uh-huh. about being a, a driver, bus driver, truck driver, mm-hmm. yeah. but it was all about family for him. He wanted right. to put all his energy into a big right. family, had all the God. kids over, huge Christmases, huge yeah. Thanksgiving. Even today, I'm like, I could call him up. He's 80 years old, and I could say, Dad, I'm out of money. Come live with me. Right. And he's like, right. you know, move in with me, and that's that's how he is. This is my real dad, yeah. who I didn't grow up with, who is, I grew up with a, 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 the, the sociopathic stepfather dad. But uh, when you get around this guy, he, he's all love and all heart. So Yeah. Well, anyway, the finishing around the mountain Let's come was, back that, to that. was that she just told me, she said, look, let me go work for a while and you just figure out your next business. So let me be the breadwinner, basically. And um, and so she got up at one o'clock in the morning. We go to this union bakery to, this. to work. And uh, so she could make the money. And I was trying to, to write business plans on Paramount Studios and trying to get into that that business. And in the interim, this little thing that we started as sort of a love project, a hobby, we weren't making any money with, you know, dream connections, just kind of kept growing and growing until we finally had to say, we got we got to start taking a salary out of this and make it real because it's taking too much of our time, even though we loved it. So it's sort so of one of the things. literally introducing men to foreign women was, a, was a, just a hobby in the beginning. Yeah, we, we didn't take money out of it for two and a half years. But it was something I was passionate about because I believe there's so many misnomers and I wanted to prove to the world that we could connect sincere people. And, and so we were doing it, and I loved it. And so we were going over four times a year to do these events, and it was working wonderfully, and I was hosting a weekly show. But I wasn't taking any money from it, but it started to grow and take more and more of our time. So I, I go, this this is it. It's just sort of, you do what you love, and the money will follow. Yeah. Ser- literally, swear to God, that's, that's literally what happened. You create value doing what you love mm-hmm. and give it to the world, and the money will follow. Yeah. And because uh, a lot of people do what they love, and money doesn't follow. But they, cre- but once they create value and start giving it away, yeah. that's when the money follow- follows. You know, is, you do. And I was taught yeah. that you got to give away more at first, and, and just and keep giving yeah. away. You know, yeah. It's so the YouTube channel. That's why we love this YouTube channel. Give away lots of value. Um, yeah, we charge for programs. I'm not. A, I think it's freaking awesome. And we yeah. and the people who really want to take them come pay for them. And, and our advanced stuff is expensive, and on purpose. And, uh, but we have tons of inexpensive, cheap and free stuff that helps the world too. And I think the combination is essential. It's critical. It's the model. I think it's the right model. Yeah. You know, we do the same thing. I like, I, I've been doing uh, a show a week. We have over 800 videos on our YouTube channel and probably a third of them are, are teaching, you know, that I do. Cause I found my love is teaching, even though I get to do this matchmaking stuff, you know, I, my love is teaching. It's great. I love, same here. I love watching men's. I really, in fact, it's interesting. I've been doing this so many years. It was only about two years ago that, that kind of like my, my purpose statement came on me and in my, my purpose, my mission in life is to bring men's hearts to life and inspire greatness in others. And it just, I woke up one morning and it all came together and I've been doing this for so long, but that's really what it is. I know you feel that, you know, I know personally for you, like you know, we sit down and we go through our coffees and stuff. And you tell me about this guy and, and his breakthrough and what he came in. You feel the energy in you. And so, you know, that's where you find your place. And so, honestly, the thing that I, I passionately want more than anything else, I want for guys to have their own moments like that, for a guy to find his thing, for his passion, for him to come alive and say, I found mine. Yeah. You know? I think it's beautiful. Um, and I'm 100% behind that. And, and I'm all behind with this idea of, couples having each other's backs Mm. you know uh (laughs) and i do understand what you mean by a lot of the the foreign women get that you know i had a uh, my ex-girlfriend uh uh, was colombian and fiery little colombian and some of you have seen her on the channel um (laughs) and uh some of you threatened me to bring her back but we, we are she's she's uh she's a mother now and doing amazing and she would she said to me once she's like you know you we always have to have each other's backs. You know, you, you, when I'm, you know, even if I say something, she said to me once, she goes, even if I say something wrong or stupid in public, you have my back. And then you can tell me later when nobody's around, you know, what was that and vice versa. And I'm like, she, she gets it, you know, she gets it. 
And that's what, why I respect her so much. What she gets is actually a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, what she gets is something very unique that is one of the secrets why these relationships work. They have a different understanding of the relationship model than we do. Mm -hmm. Completely different. And, and this is why, even though this concept of relationships has kind of been overdone over the years, it's never had the results we've had. It's never had this paradigm shift we have. And so I really want to share this because whether you're married now or you want to get in a long-term relationship or at any point in your life, you decide, you know, like for me, I got to go over to, to Brazil when I, uh, my second wife passed away, and so I had this period of time where I was single, and I got to go to Brazil and and party like a rock star and go with these guys and meet all these girls, and we had an amazing time. Yeah, your stories from Brazil made me want to go to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could tell you more. But um, when I came back home, then I'm sitting alone hey, in bed. It was bed. particularly the story of the woman that owned the grocery store? Yes. That Danny. story got me, yeah. She's in my book as and well. And picture, the picture was amazing. Yeah, it's, and that's in the book as well. By the way, if you want to know the book, just go Amazon.com. Just type in International Dating. It pops to the top. It, not a problem. You, it's easy. Paperback book, about 200, uh, 200 pages. Easy read. I'm a very conversational writer. But um, You also have a picture of a girl in that book, and I was like, ooh, is she still single? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, a lot. she's one right in the early, I think the first yep. third of it. She has, the, I think, a tattoo on her arm. She's yeah. She's getting yeah. anything. And I was like, what? Well, I don't know if you know who she is. I do, and she's she's now married. Sorry, oh, so uh, too bad. <laughs> I know. Well, that's my business. And a two percent right? divorce rate. Damn it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But no, but we keep recruiting all the time too. Yeah, we get thirty girls, you know, coming in uh, for every one of these new tours we do. And we do about ten a year, so it's it's pretty cool. But uh, one of the things you learn about them is they see relationships differently, and this is what I want to teach at the event because your mind has got to be changed if you want to have a successful relationship with somebody. You've got to look at it differently. They see you as an extension of themselves. Nice. And, and I have to go deeper into this because you have to understand it. They would never embarrass you publicly any more than they would. Why would they hurt themselves that way? And I've heard this kind of quote. They're not looking to find their life partner. They're looking to find their half. This is the common, for, and the, they use that language universally, whether it's Ukraine or Thailand or Colombia. They talk that way. They think that way. And it's a different dynamic. In, in the West, we're all about the rugged individual. We're all about making my mark and who I am compared to the world and how I stand against everything. And they're not. You go over to see their social cultures. It's about how you fit into the social realm of their friends, their family, their network. And once you're inside, it's a different bond. It's a different relationship. We, don't, we can't, you have to see it differently. Yeah, it's an interesting thing because when you say that you're half, I always think of that term, you know, my <clears throat> there's your better half, my other half. And people always say, well, that's my better half. And I'm like, why would you say that? No, it's and, not you know, like that's, that. And, that's, it, it, and that's not how they think. No. They they don't think better half. They think half. Yeah. They think uh, they think you're great. Like, I see this a lot in some, some relationships where they'll be like, uh, yeah, he's my, you know, I'm his better half or, or he's this. And they, they give each other this like, this, devalued they devalue each other to some degree and you'll right. see a lot of men getting devalued in culture and in sitcoms and tv in the united states and being made fun of and he's a joke and the woman's always holding it together mm -hmm. and you don't see that with these relationships and these relationships the man's the king and she's the queen and we're going to be a team and uh, you're not my we're we're, we're Dude. and that attitude difference is huge yeah. long term because maybe it's funny here and there but over years of that little picking starts to break down the, 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 the foundation is what I see between you two. It, it's, it's huge. The, the thing I think that guys will understand and appreciate is the other side of that that's different is not just how they relate to you as an extension of themselves, which I believe if you guys come from a faith base, it's the biblical model, the two shall be one. I mean, it, it's actually the foundational idea of relationship. You separate from your mother and father, the two shall become one. And I don't mean just one flesh physically like in having sex, but they become one. And, and that reflection is a new entity, a new person. But the, the, the most interesting part to me is to watch how they see themselves within a relationship. Because you, what is traditional values, right? He's talking about that. And people have these weird ideas. It's political. It's not. It's, it's about uh, my definition of traditional values are women who see, uh, or men who see family as the most important value. You know, their relationship with each other comes before anything else. And they uh, have a hard work ethic without complaint. Uh, and they have respect for children and the elderly. And, and you see this culturally that, that are very strong. Um, and so for me, when I see somebody who comes into a relationship, the woman sees it this way. And, and the best one example, I always interview these ladies, how do you see dynamics? And so they gave this picture. I want you to imagine this. This woman, 
And I didn't make this up. She says to me, she goes, I really see the woman as the spirit of the home. She's the soft, warm presence that makes the love happen in the house. And when somebody comes in and we, we bring a guest in our home, they can feel the warmth in our home. And the man is the castle walls who has to protect that softness. Yes. And, and I was, I just dropped the mic. I was going, and, and she got married the very next tour. I played that video. <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, I want you. Well, there's a whole culture that feel that way. You know, you got to yeah. understand, you go somewhere where they, they're okay with a feminine role as being the nurturing, the, the warmth, the spirit, and they want the man to, to guard and protect them. So well, you're saying that's it. not because she's she's taking care and nurturing that she's not less? Yeah, thank you, exactly. Yeah. And it's 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 a it's a hard mm-hmm. concept for some people to get, but that's can be just as, if not more powerful, um, in a lot of ways. And uh, so this is this is really you said something the other day that relates to what you just said, and you said um, that women are uh, um, men are about purpose direction or mm-hmm. in, in, you know, there's that, that, and I always talk about it as tension that we're the masters of the, the physical tension. And then you said that women are about co- connection. connection. And I always say they're about the, the, uh, uh, they're inter- like men are the physical tension, the women, are the emotional tension, the internal mm-hmm. state. But when you look at it, like connection, they're monitoring. If you take an old tribe, like a village or a tribe, mm-hmm. the men go hunt, protect, bring the food, build the buildings, create the space. For, and like it's almost like this this space now is protected from the outside world. It becomes its own space, its own entity. And then the women fill the inside of it, like the inside of a cell or the inside of whatever needs to be filled. And they fill it with emotions. Uh, they start to monitor. They, they, they prepare the food. They start to monitor and nurture the inside of this, which is hugely important. Otherwise, you just got empty walls with nothing inside. Mm-hmm. And so they can tell the difference between two babies' cries. Like, mm-hmm. this one means this, and this one means this, and because they're paying attention to the subtleties. Two hunters come back from the hunt, and there's a little, they're a little disgruntled with each other, and they'll immediately pick up on that and start calming the different energies and adjusting them because that's, that's their role, and yeah. that keeps discord from it and keeps everything healthy and flowing, you know? And they're all speaking one language because they're in one tribe. Mm-hmm. We were talking about that the other yeah, day. And yeah. so everything you're talking about kind of comes together when you look at it that way. You know, the inner world, the inner world of this, this, they create these walls and then they fill the inner world of it, you know. It is true. And, and it's, you have to think about what works best and what works best is the way we were designed to be. Yep. Uh, and you, we and I talk about that diet wise too. You go back to paleo man, right? And that ends up being a guy. Our bodies actually respond best. We eat like, like we were supposed to originally, right? I and, believe, I, yeah, I believe that, uh, and a lot of people, you'll, a lot of you might disagree, but I believe fat burning uh, diets are, are the healthiest. And I've, I've done them all, and I do believe there's value to a vegan, a uh, vegetarian diet, a uh, vegan, not more than vegetarian, uh, in that there's a lot, there can be, if you not if you don't have problems with the plants, which I do, there can be a lot of cleansing value to it, and a lot of deacidifying the body in certain ways, and la- lactic acidosis and all that stuff. But in the long run, I do believe, personally, that you need the building blocks from from healthy fats and, and uh, healthy internal Basically organs. Basically eating animals, yeah, yeah. meats. Yeah. Well, aside from getting to that, which I hope we want to, I really at, I the, at the event I want to get into this with yeah. you because I want to talk about for me as a layman. Uh, the other thing they don't know about me is is uh, four years ago I weighed two hundred and fifty pounds, and I had, oh, his transition. He's been showing me pictures, amazing. And I had uh, no muscle, and I never have, so this is all new to me. And um, I and it, because you put I did a lot the of muscle show, fast though. Well, I learned. I learned some things, and that's what I want to teach because. For me, uh, part of what I do is I also interviewed some guys. So when I decided to go on this quest, I would interview guys that I respected had the body I wanted. And I learned from them. And then finally, the thing that really built the muscle was I got a trainer who trained stage you know, yeah. guys like body this. Builders, yeah. And so the combination of things I learned on my own. But what I love about you is you're a scientist. You're this chemical guy behind it. So oh, it, I, I geek out and drive people nuts with all the data. Uh, so it'd be kind of fun to like, here, here I did it. Look, I did it. I learned. And I'll show you guys the pictures before and, and, and after. And I'm not done. I still got a way yeah. to go. But I'm, I'm really happy with my body it, compared to the, you know, the, the Pillsbury Doughboy I was just four years ago. And um, but it'd be a fun conversation to compare the notes yeah. on, on why this happened for me and plus what I learned to actually make it work. Yeah, the, the reason I get so into the details <laughs> is because I, I'm not just building muscle. I had to heal, heal so much ailments in my body that, yeah. that was passed down from generation. My, my grandmother, my mother, my grandfather, all tons of gut problems, super sick, emotional problems from the gut problems. And I've spent many years trying to, not trying, understanding how all that works. And I've got a pretty good picture now and I'm building on it. 
how to uh, how to work with a lot of that stuff. Even anxiety on a nutritional level can be massively helped. Not mm-hmm. just on a, there's a lot of stuff we can do in the room when I'm working with clients to get the anxiety down, but there's a whole wiring and, a, and a nutrition complex mm-hmm. behind anxiety. And when you get into yes. all that and you start to see all that, you're like, you can heal so many emotional things with nutrition in combination with good uh, work like what we do. Well, and I, and I make this commitment to the guys. By the time I, I get to, to Miami, I want to finish. There's some research I want to do on this area of that uh, Bruce, Dr. Bruce Limpton and Dr. Joe Dispenza have touched on in, in the connecting to the cells that I, I think explain a lot. And we'll add that to our discussion. The but mind affects the, the physiology so, so much, much. And longevity and the rest. But let's finish the conversation how this ties back into paleo yep. relationship models. Okay, we're saying, you know, our diet works best the way we were designed to from our creator in this tribal environment, but the relationships do too. And in those days when the guys could be gone for a couple of weeks hunting, you know, whether it was woolly mammoths or, or buffalo or whatever they yeah. did to bring back to the tribe, the women had to uh, coexist as a society while they're gone. Most of the men are gone. And so creating uh, bonds with each other and creating, you know, this is one of those things where, you know, it doesn't always work as well because they had to get along with each other. There's a little competition for who's going to get the alpha when he comes back kind of a thing. And this is a discussion we had the other day, and I but think it's important. You have to understand for their survival, their survival, women had to be relationally driven. Yes. Because that's all they had. They weren't there to defend or put a, pick up a spear and try to fight something. They had to They had to make cohesion among the tribe while the men were gone. And then, like you said, when the men come back, they provided, they protect, and... and, um, and the women reward them for that. So in, in a sense that today the sad part is um, the feminist movement has rewarded only one aspect of a woman's life, and that's if she's career successful in a man's world. And they they demonize a woman who wants to have a supportive, nurturing relationship, which is resonant to her ancestral soul. Um, and, and so it's like we're not trying to put anybody in a place, but... I want to understand, help women understand the strength they have in that role. For a, a guy to find a woman who will nurture him and take care of him in a way, make his life beautiful, what wouldn't he do for her? And for the guy today, especially, if you want to know how to, if you want to, I, this is, here's the secret sword to this whole thing. We have to have trust and respect. We both have power. Okay, a man can't have physical power and he has to restrain it. A right. woman, you can have manipulative power over a man to control and own his life, and it's simply through the aspect of he's so desperate to find admiration, respect, and love and tenderness. And honestly, if a woman come along and just say, you're my hero, I, I, I believe in you, I believe in what you can do, a guy will rise up to whatever challenge she puts before him because we're so needy for that. We so want that to happen. But here's what I want to, want to encourage guys to see. If they can get in their mind what a healthy model looks like, a relationship and what a healthy woman brings to the table to who has a sincere desire to nurture because i believe you guys what we deal with guys today is who have a sincere desire to want to be part of a, a contributing part of a woman's life they have a good heart they want to give yeah. they just want it returned to them they want to put out and give something to a woman who will give it back to them and so quickly what you learn is by following chemistry i'm going through a lot of shortcut to relationship teaching will do but if you follow chemistry between people, there's a lot of subconscious things that, that create that connection. You learn trust, which is essential. So you have a right person to put your energy out. And when they bring it back, it's interesting how that combination quickly brings two people to feel like they've just known each other forever. And it's this blending into that. And where you can bring your full strength, she can bring her full nurturing, and it completes the cycle in a way that's very healthy. There is no weakness in the feminine. In fact, there's a part of the masculine that needs the feminine to trigger it. When I say this hero part, when you see your woman hold your arm and look you in the eyes tenderly and just say, honey, I believe in you, you know, you're my hero. It says it awakens something in us that nothing else does. I mean, we can go be entrepreneurial, we can go weightlifting, we can do different things to awaken our inner warrior, but there's something very special when when you want to be the hero for a woman that um, is at, a, I believe, at a higher level. It adds a spiritual component to it. And so what I'm trying to do is help couples create this third-level relationship where there's a spiritual element to it, where the love they have is, is, is reciprocal and flows and trusting. And it feels like two people have known each other all their lifetime. And, and this is why, and plus there's a third component I'll teach at the event, why it can 
reciprocate and perpetuate itself forever. Um, but it's different, and, and, and we have to create a different model because the one out there isn't working, and nobody's happy. Not only are half divorced, half the ones are still married, or most of them aren't happy. Yep. And, and so it teaches guys to go, why would I want one of these, right? Yeah, in the old days, they would actually uh, and stay married even if they were miserable. Maybe right. get separate bedrooms right. or separate beds. Um, you know, my grandparents had separate beds, you know, and um, they were married over 50 years. I just want to tell you guys, please, I want to give you hope. Um, it's happening. There are amazing reasons to want to be, I believe, in a, in a committed relationship with a woman where every day you get to wake up with somebody like this. And, of course, I go places where they're beautiful and they're, you know, typically 10 years younger, you know, and these kind of things. But it's the nurturing heart. But there are reasons to want to be in one of these that are great, that every day you wake up with somebody who who, who cares about you, thinks about you as much as you, them, and the two of you are connected, and all day long you have touching points. And when you get back together, it's adorable. You know, we saw Zan last night, you know, with, with his girl. They're five years together, and still she's... She's, you know, he's touching her hair and she's like, it, it is, I, and I wonder, I thought maybe they'd only been together like eight months because they're just like no, still in this honeymoon it's over phase. five. It's a, it might even be six or seven. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. But they show all those signs of the honeymoon. Yeah, I haven't seen, um, I've only seen, I actually I was going to say, I've, I've known, I've been hanging out with them pretty regular for what, the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. And um, I've only seen it increase, not mm -hmm. decrease. Right. I've seen it get stronger and better between them two. Yeah which is really interesting to me because um, you often see in that much time, you'll see the opposite. It's possible guys. I want to give you hope because we're, we're uncovering what it takes to do that. And here's what I love. It's like, you know, you Zan and probably a dozen of the guys from Evan Pagan, you know, David D'Angelo, all these guys, they, they, they end up zoning in to first, first of all, honestly, most of us, except for Evan, you know, found international women, but uh, it's like the other side of it is, yeah, I'm sorry, that's probably not a proper thing to say. Evan got a wonderful lady too, and he's happy. But it's like all, the ultimate game is to wake up every day with that. Yep. And it, the deeper game is the love emotions than just the conquest. And, and there's a lot of truth to that. You know, as I mature more and more, for a long time, I just didn't want, really want relationships. And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't date at all when I was young. Then I hit my mid-30s, finally started dating. Then I finally got good with women. So... I spent many years just enjoying different women and then I get into relationships and I want to get out because I just wasn't there. It's my, literally my dating life started way later mm -hmm. and I decided I was going to ride that out and not, not rush to jump in. Cause here's the problem. I saw this right away. If I rush to jump into something that's going to be lifelong, I'm going to, that before my body and soul were ready, I was going to end up choosing somebody that probably wasn't right for me. Right. And as you get more and more ready for it and you start to watch people with amazing relationships, your mind starts changing. Like suddenly now you want this. You're not ha I'm not, how many guys, you guys think about this. Have you ever stayed with a woman you thought was good, you were dating her, mm -hmm. but out of the fear of her being with somebody else, losing her, missing out, is the reason mm -hmm. you committed to her and went into a relationship or even a marriage. Like I've heard guys say to me, well, she'll be good for me. You know, things like this. Yeah. And if you're getting into a relationship out of fear, literally out of fear or worry or concern that something's going to be wrong if you don't do it, how can that end well? You know, you, whenever you talk about your woman, you talk about her as somebody you can't wait to see again. You yeah. can't wait to hang out with again. It's not like, oh yeah, I have to go home to the wife. I have to go. There's none of that. Zan's the same way. You know, this is, this is a huge part as you get, and here's the other part, as you get more mentally healthy and start to like your life, because I know he likes his life. Yeah, Zan right. likes his life. They yeah. like who they are from day to day. They don't get up saying, I have to be somewhere else to be happy. I'm right here. Then you can invite somebody into that happy life and have a happy life together. And as, well said. And as my life's become super happy, every girl that shows up in my life, I mean, literally could be an amazing girlfriend. Like, like, like we were hanging out at that restaurant the other day and yeah. that, that cutie came over and I was talking to her a lot and she, and I was just like, wow, she's, and I've hung out with her a little bit since before, you know, yeah. she, I already knew her a little bit, such a sweetheart with an open heart. And yeah. I just like, she's so cool. And, and, uh, I'm meeting, it just literally, it's like you draw a different type of person, male and female into your yeah. life. I, I, you know, you fasted. We didn't have a chance to finish this conversation, but you started yesterday saying you're at a place in your life where um, 
you, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. you put it to the universe or you say it to yourself or you just have this belief that, um, you know, women are just gonna be drawn to you yeah. and you just see it happening and, and it's adorable. I, we were having breakfast and I'm watching the interaction. I'm just waiting for you to, you know, get a number or something. I realized you already had her number and you guys were already talking or <laughs> privately because it was so cute. The energy yeah. was, and it was natural. It was just fun. Um, and this is where I want to go to a conversation <clears throat> you and I talked about having that I, I really wanted to do for, for guys. I think that one of the most valuable things we can teach you, because everybody, we're guys, we're goal-driven. Right. We want the end game. I want the woman in my bed tomorrow. I want to wake up with her. I want this. Oh, God, and, that's that's something I had to, like, for years it was yeah. like, you know, sleep with them the first night. Get them right. in bed. Go, and now go, it's go. like, now my whole attitude is create just an amazing, fun time. And if whatever happens, happens. And, you know, I love to sleep with women. Don't get me wrong. And I have that intent, but if it doesn't happen, I'm happy too. And I'm, I could just like sit and just gaze in her eyes and flirt. And that's, that's, they feel the difference. Let me me give me, I'll tell you a story. And and I want to go into this thing about scent of a woman we talked about doing. Um, There was a time when I had uh, just come back from seeing Danny actually in Brazil. Okay. It's a number of years ago. ago, Yeah. Yeah. But I want to send her the transition because the time when I first became single again at 40, I was very bad. At dating too, yeah. I was awkward. I go, what is this about? Last time I was single, I was twenty eight, and now I'm forty, and I'm like the outcast. Like, what the hell? I didn't, you know, I didn't get it. And I was, and of course, you know, you look picture me back then. I dressed like a grandpa, and and uh, you know, I didn't realize how many just things I didn't know that I, I was doing badly, and I was communicating bad energy, you know, or just cultural things. You know, I went on my first blind date. You know, somebody set up for me, and and it was into a wonderful girl she was uh lovely 38 years old and and um i went all out you know because my first day i'm bringing flowers i'm taking her to this fancy restaurant so and and it was playful the energy was good afterwards we ended up kissing i'm going oh my god my first date in you know 12 13 14 years whatever it was and i'm kissing we're making out and then i text her and evidently um being a pretty girl, she'd been stalked or something. And so she had this fear reaction that I was going to stalk her. And so she, she just kind of blacklisted me out of it. And I'm going, are you kidding me? We had this great day. We ended up kissing. And I said to her, I said, hey, we had a great day. I hope we can see you sometime this week again. Let's see each other again. And it, and then my mutual friend who hooked us up, he goes, Mark, you violated the 72-hour no contact rule. I go, what the hell are you talking about? What is a rule? I just I just got in this scene. I was just, oh, I'm just trying to be honest, right? So this is why I love it overseas. They, they'll... They love to hear. They love to know how you feel about them. But anyway, it was it was these things that drove me crazy. And um, so the 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 thing I, I I learned getting back to the thing about just learning to enjoy the essence of the woman was this. After I met Danny, right, this woman I really wanted to meet and marry in Brazil, who was so fantastic, so taught me about the culture and about why things are different. Um, I came back feeling love. I felt all this hope. I felt treated so differently. And I'm in the the jetway getting on the plane out of Philadelphia to make my final final uh, journey he's back. breaking the I'm set breaking the set already <laughs> day one day one it'd have been better if it fell over day that would have been great that would have been great yeah so um and, and i'm just getting on the plane and behind me i hear this this guy with this little mousy voice going oh that's a very pretty purse and i'm just going, oh my god please and this very rich voice this woman comes up, thank you very much he says not everybody appreciates leather today and this animal sensitivity you know and i'm listening to this and he's going like no no i think it's very nice and I, i'm just going for the sake of men I just felt like I needed to jump in and say something, you know. So I turned around and I said, you know, it's really not as much the fact that it's leather, but if you killed the cow yourself, some people might have a problem. And without flinching, she jumps back at me. She goes, actually, I did kill it. And, and it, of course, you know, game on, right? It was yeah. fun. And so I go, okay, well, did you use the hammer? Did you slit the throat? Oh, we used the hammer. Takes longer, but, hey, you know, it's effective. She goes, and I let my kids watch. I go, you know, that's how they learn where stuff comes from. And with that, I turned back around and faced the front. And, of course, by this time, there's like 10 people in both directions dead silent. They weren't sure if we were serious or not, you know. <laughs> and it, but it was this fun, playful, bantering energy. And I had this confidence. And afterwards, um, you know, I, I asked her, I said, you know, that was so much fun. She said, why do you think that was so much fun for us? She goes, because we're safe. I got kids, you know, you're not looking for anybody. And, and we could just enjoy this flirting energy. And, I, and it was kind of this aha moment. Can't every guy get to a place where they're not trying to get something out of it? Can they just simply enjoy the essence of a woman, the feeling, the sensuate, the energy of, of just playful flirt, flirting bantering? Yeah, you can have, and this is the mistake people make with goals. You can have a goal or an intention. Yeah, I love sex. I want to have sex. I want to meet women to have sex with. But when you're attached to that goal, that goal has to be the outcome. That's when the problem comes in. So you set that, the way I look at it is I'll set a goal. I'm going to meet a woman to date and maybe have amazing uh, relationship with, sexual relationship, emotional relationship. 
And how it happens is really out of my control. It's just going to happen. And I know that. I trust my subconscious mind, the universe, God, whatever you want to say, the monkey in the sky is going to make it happen. And it's going to show up at some point. And that, that freedom from outcome allows me, I'll flirt with this girl, talk to this person, and, and you know, maybe... I just make her smile today. Yeah. And she feels beautiful. But maybe the girl sitting over there watches this. And yeah. As I'm getting off the, the train or wherever, she's like, smiles at me and says something. And maybe she ends up being my right. girl. Or maybe, you know, and, and you never know how it's all going to play out. It's, right. it's, it's so right. beyond our ability to see it all because our conscious mind is so small. Your job is just to go out, be happy, make the world happy, create a lot of value, and trust that the intentions will, will happen and they come together problem is is that most of you don't even not most of you this is really that was rude to say a lot of people and this included myself for a long time don't mm. wake up enjoying their day they wake up stressed angry frustrated confused so how are they supposed to go out and create value in the world when they're pissed off angry depressed sad that's the first thing you work on and i talked about that earlier but no you're right in fact um on the broader subjects of personal development and success for men um i can't think of any mentor that I've podcaster uh, guru anybody I've talked about who hasn't covered this topic about starting your day yeah. having a morning routine and you know for me it's like my day changes a lot because I travel a lot so it's hard for me to have a fixed thing when I'm in one place yeah I definitely I, I'll get up at uh, six o'clock I have this is what I eat um, this is my routine <clears throat> I'm always listening to YouTube videos I I pick those little five to eight minute motivational ones mm -hmm. so every day I'm starting off with with something that's challenging me, that's exciting, that's motivating me. And I love those. If you guys haven't seen those, just go to YouTube and type in inspirational videos, motivational videos, and pick one. And, and then every day, YouTube will start sending you more. It's cool. But you, you, you got to start your day with something that gets you out of the muck. The other thing is that we're learning from Dispenza and from, uh, is, is you have this period of theta coming out of sleep, you know, into the awakening world where it's it's still a world of imagination. Like if you're mm -hmm. in a luxury, if you have a Saturday morning when you go back to sleep or something, you can actually then put create a dream you want to go into and actually take yourself yeah, there. Yeah, when you start getting a little conscious in your dreams, it's fun. Oh, my God. You create fantasy worlds, and they really come to life. I, I had this dream the other day. It was just simple. I was running one direction. I was being yeah. pulled in the other direction, and I couldn't control it. Yeah. And then I became conscious of that, and I was like, and I knew from my work that that's a want, like to strong. I wanted really badly to go this way. And the presupposition of the subconscious mind, because I've been doing this for so many years, is that that you because of the want is so strong and want implies lack that it's not going to happen. I remember laying there and I said, can I just let, and my thought was, can I just let go of this want and just relax? And then suddenly I started moving forward in, in the dream. You go back uh, into it. Yeah. And and because I, I stopped the fight inside myself and it literally shifted the dream right there. And it was really, really cool. So yeah. start your morning routine with something that's going to do it. Be aware of the fact you can program your mind and your thoughts in those early stages and to to do a self-talk. You know, this is where you put in your beliefs. I am this kind of person. Yeah, I, I have do. This. I have I haven't written all the, down all the time, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then the thing about... In fact, I want to do a whole podcast on how I do my, my morning ritual because it's okay. so important. Uh, how I do my goals and read them and all that because I just think um, the process has become so powerful. We're doing a week long right now. Uh, with all these students and dating and these guys are killing it and the morning process we use right now is really really a huge part of that i'm having them all start with it every day and there's several elements to it so i think i've got one down uh, i also want to we, we've talked all about a lot of topics here and i want to acknowledge brent smith uh because there's a couple things that i've talked about that brent smith has talked about you brought one up brent smith talked about here he reached a point where one day he um I should do a podcast with Brent. Hey, Brent, you out there? We're going to do a podcast. Um, where he um, he decided one day he didn't want to go out and, and approach women anymore. And he said, I started saying in my goals and in his morning his process that women uh, chase him all the time. Women mm -hmm. chase me all the time. And he said, at first it got worse. It didn't get better. But then it started working, and it started working better. And pretty soon and women were coming up to me all the time and flirting with me. And mm -hmm. I had the exact same experience after I heard him say that. I did the exact same thing, and oh my God, it, it got worse at first, and then it got better. <laughs> I, and I believe that is be, there's a, a sense of a vacuum you created an openness. Now there's a yeah. place for them to come into. Yeah. You know, before you were chasing, chasing, and choking, yeah. and, and it's harder for them to come into a place where you're, 
you're, you're doing that kind of pursuing. And, and one of the things I want to do is I'm going to do a, uh, a teaching uh, on the science and fun of flirting. And I think if you make it a lifestyle, not only does it make your day fun, but it opens you up in a different way with, with the detachment to outcome. Yeah. Just enjoy your day and flirt with grandmas, flirt with other you know yeah. dudes flirt with it's just the energy of teasing people and you want to be in a and i want to be in relationships where i don't have to stop flirting right. because let's say i'm in a monogamous relationship i'm not going to cheat i never that's that's wrong but i don't want to stop flirting and i don't want a woman that wants me to stop flirting and Great. it's not like i'm implying i'm going to go have sex with you flirting it's it's just having fun with people yeah and uh, there's this thing that somebody once said and i thought it was an interesting observation they said women especially in modern age with with uh, technology and Instagram, they're getting, you know, you can be dating them for three, four, five years, and there's always guys DMing them, hitting on them, telling them they look beautiful, telling them they look sexy. But guys, because on average we're not the visual ones, mm -hmm. uh, we shut our flirting down, we stop looking at girls, and we don't get that same validation that the women get for years. And then we break up with the relationships, and we our source of validation has been her mm -hmm. and our connection to source, in a sense, or whatever you want to call that. Uh, and that connection source, but but when a guy is really good, like I watch Zan do it, and his girlfriend will never stop him from flirting because she loves she she. It's part of women, and we go out and we make people smile, we mm -hmm. we ground them, and we keep doing that. Then what happens is is you're there's a sense that life wants to give back to you, and you get that same feeling. And then what happens is you don't start, you know, because you're getting it from the relationship outside the relationship. It's connection. You you it actually makes the relationship stronger. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing everything you're saying and I'm, I'm living in it and, smi and smiling, you know, even yesterday with mine, you know, we're teasing each other. Um, you know, they, I even there's a water leak in the office. She says, Oh, nice. You get to have a day in the spa. You know, we're here and stuff like this. And, but we had this little, little teasing bantering back and forth. Yeah, and we went to the spa yesterday, it, which is part of our life. You know, um, I can't see a day where we wouldn't tease each other about something, yeah. you know, but it's in a playful way. It's, it's interesting. There's a dark side to sarcasm, mm -hmm. which can be hurting and demeaning. And there's another side that's, that's, uh, well, playful the, in, and the intent is felt behind it. And if yeah. the intent is to uplift and, and make, and then that's great. If yeah, the yeah, intent is to actually hurt, don't think they don't feel the fucking difference. Okay. They feel the difference. And uh, don't jab it where people are weak either. That's another thing. If you know somebody's a woman's insecure about her weight, don't make fun of her weight. Right. You know, um, those types of things. Uh, and that's just obvious. It should be obvious, but, you know. Let's, let's cover this. Maybe we'll do it another time. But I really, um, I think when you talk about detachment from the outcome, I don't think we can ever get a guy to detach from the outcome. He has to have a goal. I think we just need to give him a better goal. Yeah, well, you got to have a connection to something greater than the outcome to, to detach from the outcome. So, a goal is an example. Uh, believing in God is is, is your big your your your, sure. your 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 pastor son spiritual guy. Uh, believing in some type of God. I mean, I'm I'm I love I I do like Christianity a lot. I also like Buddhism. I like Hinduism, and I believe there's something greater than us mm -hmm. controlling or working with everything in consciousness and. And I and you know the more I surrender to this connection to the, the, the earth, uh, the universe, God, whatever you want to say, the less I need validation from people. It's true, and this is where we come back to one of Glover's famous, famous teachings. He says, you know, the woman is to be the icing on the cake, but that means you have to build a good cake. You can eat cake without icing. Yeah. You know, this is like, have you built your cake first, and and that way you can stand on your own without her. That way, when she comes, it's a blessing. You know, the problem is I have guys who, who are looking to add or add a woman in to like fill a gap or to yeah. create a fulfillment or a, there's a void. Make me a, happy. Right. Make me happy, which is a, a trap right there. I don't believe I, I like what Jordan Peterson says about that. Happiness is a gift. It comes to you. You can't always explain why you look at it when it comes, you know, but the thing that's really fulfilling is doing something, a struggle for something that's worth, you know, worthwhile. And that's where fulfillment and satisfaction comes from and finding out where you find fulfillment in doing a thing that causes you to have to struggle to accomplish. So they're, they're different things. But here's the same thing. Happiness is the same thing, I think, in what we should get from a woman. Let me explain why. Happiness is a byproduct of, of things come together that create it, right? right? But you can't manufacture happiness. It's a result like, you know, we go, we spend a day at a spa, we do, well, you see some, th this cool girl doing the demonstration and putting the in. It's like, oh my God, that's so cool. And happiness descends because I made an effort to go someplace, pay a fee, sit in a chair, and, um, it, it, 
you know, and go to a place where she was going to do this show. And then this experience came and happiness was an emotion that came to me as a byproduct of doing all those things to be there in a place where I could receive it. I agree with you. Um, I think we're talking about the same thing, but I think like yeah, I could, you can sit on a rock and be happy, but then you have to be, but you're right. You, I would be meditating. You go to a place. The meditation then is the thing. And you, yeah. you can create, you can have a, so then it, and with enough meditation, you start to control, you learn to bring happiness up more and more at will right. because you build the neural pathways and the, and the brain development for it. Right. So yeah, in a sense you did something to create And you that. can, you can create happy places. You have yeah. a tendency, a cigar lounge for me can be a happy place. I yeah. tend to, I tend to go somewhere and do something I know is going to create a happy Morning emotion ritual for me. Builds a foundation of happiness. Yeah. Correct. But in a sense, I think that the the woman can bring a happiness, but as a byproduct of something else. And I think the something else that we talked about is the deeper thing is, can you just appreciate the essence of a woman? Yeah. Can you appreciate, like in anything else, can you just pre- appreciate the moment you're in? With well, the gratitude? essence of a woman is feminine, right? And beauty yeah. needs a witness. Dan talks about that. And beauty, and typically beauty is fleeting. That's part of why it's it's fragile like a flower. And if you look around in the world, there's feminine everywhere. Yeah. And that's it. If you go to nature, right, you get to enjoy the, the feminine of nature. And then and then you take the memory with you, the fragrance, having been there, the, the, you know, you don't have to leave marrying it or having sex with it. But I think that there's a part of where those things come as a byproduct of having been present and having appreciated where you are and appreciating the feminine energy. Well, let's, let's play with a deeper topic real quick. And then Go I want to move also to the authentic man pretty quick because uh, okay. I want to cover that and something that we're, we're working on. But uh, there was... Um, if you think about sex in general, men, how many of you guys okay. associate sex with pleasure? But let oh, me ask absolutely. you a question. How many of you guys have bad sex or right. have bad, had bad sex? So is it, are you more interested in the emotional state of that sex gives you that you're chasing the one you want and the feeling, or are you interested in the sex itself? And here's the interesting part. If, if, you know, how a lot of guys want sex because they're biologically driven for sex, but the truth is, is they have bad sex, mm-hmm. and some women do too. Um, but there's an emotional state and a turn on and a connection and a, a exchanging of energies and feelings and together. That's what we're really chasing. We yeah. just have got it so attached to uh, penis and vagina, <laughs> right, 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 that we think that's what it's all about, and and that need for validation by getting my penis in a vagina. You know, that like I'm a man now and I'm, and next week I got to be a man again. And tomorrow I got to be a man again that we forget the whole other aspect of what we're really wanting, which is at a deeper level. I love what you say. And this is worthy of a whole different podcast or something. And you, you can pick another expert guest, but I really want you to, for your guys to go deep into this. I interviewed a couple that are sex therapists and, and I've also interviewed Glover and both of them came up with an interesting statement. I thought was fascinating. I'm going to reverse engineer this. The guy, uh, you know, talked about sometimes the two of them can have six hour long, you know, sex days or whatever. And and I'm not going to tell how long mine have been. It's, I'm not into bragging. But it's like if you get rid of the anticipation of just finishing for pleasure, you can enjoy the essence of the beauty of where you're at. Yep. And let me give you a raw example. and We'll come full circle. A raw example was I was in Amazon one time on this fishing trip and was with 15 other guys. And as a uh, the father of this chairman founder was 72 years old, and they decided to set him up with a girl. And and so <clears throat> they got in one of these three hour sex rooms. This cute little 21 year old girl, and, and he you know he was he's a good guy for 71. He's in great shape, and he was but he's like I mean you know, this was totally out of his range. And he was he was going. He's like hey I I don't know how many years I got left. I'm going to go for it. Right. He hadn't been with anybody else in like uh, what 50 years or something. And and so. I get this phone call about 45 minutes into it and he goes, I'm, I'm done. I don't know what else to do. And, you know, of course he had finished and he's like, he's not going to get it up again. That's what he's telling me. And, and I'm going like, dude, you, you got two hours and 15 minutes with a 20 year old, beautiful Brazilian woman. Memorize her body, the smell, the taste, just be present, you know, kiss her for a while. Go take a shower, do something to, to, you know, it's not about the finishing. Can you enjoy the broader scope. And when you get spiritual, add a layer to take that deeper out of just this pleasure. I just have to finish because it's my biological urge. I have to find a woman, you know, and she has to be pretty so I can brag about it and fill my ego. It's like, if you get to this level where, um, because both this coach and Glover have both said they only actually finish in sex sessions. They've said this publicly 
like a couple of times a month. Yeah, Glover and my podcast with him said uh, he once a month. Yeah, and uh, he says that he doesn't. He only ejaculates once a month. That doesn't mean you don't feel orgasm. If you start to let the energy run through your body, you actually drive the energy out of your cock into your body, and you get pleasure through your you body. Can bring it back down before yeah. the ejaculation. Yeah, and that that's how they do that. And so you train your body to do that with time. It doesn't happen immediately, but. But the point is you want to be able to take longer to enjoy the presence of the woman, the feminine energy, the sexual drive, all the other things you can yes. do if you can just be present and enjoy sex. Yes. And all of them, though, the one thing I, I will come back to, and maybe you're going to disagree with me on this one, is to really, truly go to the highest level is the spiritual component is you want to go deep into the emotions of feeling like you're connected one with this person you're with. Then, mm-hmm. and, and typically it starts with deep kissing to go in, in closure. I just imagine you, just, you, you want to go so deep and ask yourself the question, how great can this be? How connected can we be? Those are different questions than guys are asking. Yeah, I agree. And I actually do agree with that. And where I, what I say is you have to be able to have that connection and then you have to be able to have separate and then be able to separate from that connection. Because mm-hmm. if you're addicted to it and you got to have it all the time, you'll create codependency. No, no, no. But, but when while you, you're in that Yeah, scene, in that moment, yeah. The, the, let's say we're in bed for two hours, three hours, whatever it whatever. is, four hours, six hours. In that time, we're bonding and creating that circle of energy. And then let's say i got to go off to work. I need to separate that energy and then move that energy into my work. Mm-hmm. And uh, whereas codependents can't really let go. Understood. Yeah, and that's the that's the only caveat I add to that. And then the codependents, then when, when they bond, it's not bonding and letting a circulation happen. It's trying to, it's a needy circulation. Correct. And then now that, you become addicted to that, yeah. to that energy, and I respect that. This is where we come full circle back to the hero talk. Yeah. If you understand the relationship of the woman um, is not only to help us spiritually in some of those levels of connectivity that we don't normally or, or we need to mature into, but it's to, to use her drive to want for us to then be better at everything else we do, whether it's yeah. to be her hero. And, and I wrote a poem on this. It's in my book. The The dynamic is this. It's like, um, in, in, I'm not going to read the, read the poem verbatim, but the essence of it is here's a story of a woman who walks by and everybody's like, oh my God, this is a 10. They're looking at her and everybody's like hoping she'll pay attention to them. And and uh, so she comes up and she's talking to this guy. And she says, at first you feel the butterflies, you feel the energy rise up and you just go, oh my God, this is amazing. And hear the sound of her voice is like angel wings and, and it makes you want to do something. And so you take off on this thing to go champion a cause, to do something, come back and show the trophy to your woman. But in the process, as you come back with a trophy from having done this accomplishment with this energy you got from wanting to, that's in us, the warriors come out, you want to do this thing. The truth is whether then in the poem, it says she comes back and sees now her champion on the podium wants to take her as her champion and be on his arm. It's like whether she does or not, doesn't matter. You use the energy to accomplish something great. And I think that's where we can take the feminine energy, the drive in us. And let's go back to what Napoleon Hill talked about this. You did a whole chapter in that on, on, on Think and Grow Rich to take the sexual energy and, and channel it into your workplace, right? Yeah. And so I think that we can healthily take the energies and think about how they serve our cause to make us a deeper person spiritually and to accomplish more at work without being attached to this person particularly and becoming addicted to that. Well, the, the, the feminine gives us a drive for life. The masculine gives us a passion turn on and we, we and then we fuck the world open. Uh, that's what David Data would say, you know, and we, and, and it's true. I mean, ultimately you can get feminine from all over the place and let it feed your body. And what most guys are trying to do is they take it in and then just, ejaculate as fast as possible and they have no energy for life their passion dies because they're ejaculating all the time and so mm-hmm. really powerful men learn to, to control that and glover said and i love this glover said you know he has sex he's in his 60s this man's in his 60s has sex every day mm-hmm. but he only ejaculates once a month but he can't ever stop touching his girl and some of you are going yeah that's because he's got blue balls and i'm like at first maybe <laughs> when you Sorry, first start yeah. the practice but with time when you learn to spread that energy through your body right. that's not the way it works it actually you have some sex and that energizes you to do more work you have yeah. some sex and you get you get excited to go do x y and z sex becomes an energy source rather than an energy suck wonderfully said yeah well, and i've spent a couple of days in this house with his family and his kids and stuff so i i can tell you that they are like they are like you see Zan. They're they're adorable. They're the way they're affectionate with each yeah. other. And she serves him. And she's she's a strong woman because anything, what she does, she's listening for how she can serve him. And once she hears something, she's on it. She's going to get that done or somebody's going to die trying. You know, and, and so she, it's not that she's a weak woman, but she's, she's focused on serving him. And the two of them are very cute. He's very relaxed at home. He's a very positive energy. And he does work hard. Like I said, his disciplines are the thing I really want to take and learn from. 
like I said, his writing disciplines, things. But uh, and, anyway. And again, people are built to be their masculine and their feminine. There are yeah. some reverse people. If you're a woman out there and you're like, but I'm masculine, that's fine. Go find a feminine man. There's feminine men out there that want to serve you if you want polarity. I don't find sexual attraction typically lasts in a non-polarized couple. Even if you want sexual even attraction. Even same-sex couples. Yeah. Yeah, even the same-sex same sex couples. There's typically in the same-sex couple, there's a polarity. Mm-hmm. And and so when you start to understand that, I mean, you could even go to work and be in your masculine, come home, be in your feminine, and vice versa. There are guys out there that in relationship are heavily masculine, but in their work, they're heavily feminine. And I don't mean like they act like a woman. They just, they, they're really good in flow. Um, Russell Brand has a lot of feminine energy, but he also has a lot of masculine energy, and he's a great combination of the two. I was watching him on the Joe Rogan podcast the other day, and he, he was just, I really have, a, I've grown my respect for him and watching that, some of that podcast was really, interesting. I only watched a little bit, but it was really interesting because he, he knows how to listen and talk, and he's got this creative flow, but he's really a masculine too, and, mm-hmm. and he has very different views than me, and I can respect him a lot. Um, you look at like, uh, if you look at like, uh, Brad Pitt in Legends of the Fall, one of his early oh. movies that drove women nuts back in the what, 90s. And, uh, he was super feminine and super masculine at the same time in that movie. And that's what drove women nuts. He was so good at it. And, and, but that doesn't mean when he's in relationship, he's going to compete with a feminine partner. He's not going to try to outdo her feminine. That would be a mistake. You know, and, and that balance is so huge. I love, you know, that is, I've used that movie as, uh, it, it's sort of a typecast of masculine energy, you know, yeah. and the brother who couldn't bear children, the symbolism in that, you know, all, there's so much about, about that movie that that's great teaching material. Yeah, check it out, guys. It's a powerful film on, on masculine energy and feminine energy and the dance between them. And, and, and when it's not, and when it's not, contr- I guess you could say, you tell me, when it's not controlled properly, this can be destru- a lot of destruction too. You know, um, it can be a lot of healing and nurturing. It can be a lot of destruction. Anything out of control. You know, it's everything is to be used for a purpose. Channeled properly. Channeled properly. Everything yeah. is to be used for, for, for a purpose. And I like what you said, even about sex and the energy, all that is to be, is there for a, a purpose to guide you into yeah. what you need to do in life, both in every, all those different aspects. So uh, sometimes we let the, the tool guide, you know, drive us. Yeah. we lose yeah we lose track of the purpose of the tool the spirit yeah. spirit of the tool versus the you know the uh in the the you don't worship the tool it's the end product yeah. you're trying to build <laughs> well it, it used to say that with law with laws what's the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law you know and yeah and there's like cops and this this one cop was telling me this says there's cops that are letter of the law and cops that are spirit oh, yeah. of the law and he goes i can't stand, and he says as a cop i can't stand letter of the law cops yeah. there's a reason this law was created what's the spirit of it did this person break the spirit of it right and i'm like if more cops were taught that, that I would wish. Be, yeah, I wish it's good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about so, authenticman.com. Yeah. And uh, there's a little place, it's a little bit up there, not much right now. Right. And um, well, I'll let you you just dive in. No, this this is, was your brain. You you bought the URL. This is your brainchild. <laughs> I bought the URL. Thank you. Bought you. The, you literally got the URL, authenticman.com. And I'm like, he found it for a, a steal. And I'm like, how did you find that URL? Yeah. You know, it was great. It was part of, I've done this before. I have several brands where I've taken a piece of paper. I want to do something. I write, write. I come at 21. I go to, you Google, is the URL available? And, and, and I came up with that one. And when it was available, uh, you know, it, it was a premium. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't. Free, yeah, but they're not going to give that away for cheap. But it's twenty five hundred bucks. I mean, That's I think I think it works for twenty five grand or more. But so it was great, and and it fit the vision for what I wanted to do because I'm trying to think of a way we want to help. Uh, my the goal we've talked about is we want to create an online uh, men's hub. You know, uh, you might call it a men's magazine, you might call it something else, but I want to have a place where guys can go and they don't have to think about where do I find out what's going on with men's topics or issues or both things for personal development, but also just for for uh, news and, and other interviews and other things. Um, I'm going to ask the ab- obvious question, yeah. Yeah. unless you want to say something else, but how is this different than Ask Men and F- well, you know, all that stuff? Okay, we're going to be very candid here, guys. I have I am absolutely horribly disappointed with Ask Men. They published an article that um, was the seven traits of traditional masculinity that need to go away, and, and they included things like repairing your own car and and. and and instead of cleaning your house or hiring redecorators, and it was so effeminate, and it was like hunting was supposed to go away. I understand why some people say that, but it's like, what's left? And this whole Me Too thing has tainted some of the traditional places. 
the other thing about some of those, uh, it almost seems like, and and I I actually believe in women having the right to vote and having all the same laws. I'm not I'm not against any of that. That's and you equality know, of opportunity. Qual- quality of opportunity. I'm 100 percent for. So the early feminists that wanted that, that's fine. They got it. That's great. But uh, when you look at this, what you just talked about, where it seems like we're trying to turn the men masculine and the, and the women masculine, and the men feminine. Yeah. yeah. So if you're trying to manipulate a man to be something else, I got a problem with that. And yeah. Whether or not their entire site's that way or the staff believes in it, they allowed this article and they published it and they promoted it as part of a weekly, here's a featured article of the week. And um, I, I just was, I don't, I, I, to me, it's like you want to go to a site you can trust where guys are just comfortable being trusted. We're not trying to make you to something you're not, but just encourage you to be the best you want to be and you can be. And, and besides, I don't go to and ask men for other things like finding good podcasts, you know, if somebody you want to listen to. Um, so it, for me, in the, the goal for the site in the long term is going to be we're going to have podcasts and we'll rotate. You'll interview somebody. I'll interview somebody. We'll have somebody else interview somebody. You'll get a broad spectrum. So not only we bring in authors and experts from things that are going to be helpful to men, but it'd be from different perspectives. Yeah, like we could have like everybody that's going to be at the Integrated Man Summit in December. It could be like people that would be on there like you, myself. Dr. Robert Glover or Zan Perrion, which he's not going to be at this one. He was the last one. We'll get him there. But, uh, but no, I meant at the Integrated <laughs> Man Center. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and people like that. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that's what I think makes it great. Yeah, and then we can be interviewing other, other people. So we, we can bring the world to this place. So you go, just go to, hey, authenticman.com, what's the latest? And we'll send you an email once a week with here's the latest articles and stuff that's coming, the latest podcasts. And we'll bring stuff in. If we have this huge breaking article that happened on CNN.com, I'll... We'll republish the article. So you don't have to go searching. We want to be a place where you can bring it in. But more than that, we want to get into personal development. I want to cover areas for guys' hearts, minds, soul, you know, your inspiration. And for fun. I mean, for... Uh, An actual healthy masculine development. Thank you. Without apology. And, yeah. and not trying to not trying to boast people up for making stuff they're not. But just, hey, it's really... It's cool to be a man. I want you to come to a site where you feel like, I love being a man again. And, and the type of masculinity you want to develop is the type that actually... Uh, appreciates appreciates and is a compliment to femininity and women. Wonderful. And, um, Good, healthy masculinity loves femininity. Yeah. And 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 it uses the the dynamic of the polarity to better both people. And yeah. have healthy masculinity, life. healthy femininity. That's what the, this you know and mm-hmm. and I think people always the term toxic masculinity makes me laugh because you law by law of polarity, which is a natural law, you can't create toxic masculinity and start talking about it without. Uh, without creating toxic femininity. And so now we're, we're creating a new concept in the world and we're looking at and thereby amplifying toxic femininity and masculinity in the there, world. But there's no such thing. And this is what kills me. We'll get into these conversations later too because the toxic word for, first came from um, the book Toxic Shame. Great mm-hmm. book um, that came out to really help Bradshaw. people. Bradshaw. Bradshaw, right, yeah. deal with his. You, you and I both talked about it. We've read it. We, we both talked about this book. But in Bradshaw's book, he does a, such a great job of help releasing people from shame and shame is a different thing from guilt. Guilt can be healthy. It's like I screwed up or I should admit it, you know, and be healthy about that. Shame is this overarching sense of something inherently wrong with me. Mm-hmm. So to put the two words together and say toxic femininity or toxic masculinity says there's something inherently wrong with being a man or there's something inherently wrong with being a, a woman. I, I I don't agree with that. And so to me, the fact that we have allowed this conversation to happen about two things that should not go together is what first has to be broken apart. There is nothing wrong with being a man. There's nothing wrong with being a woman. You should embrace it and be the best representative of your your gender in your form that you can. Yeah, this world uh, without masculinity. I mean, the bulk of masculinity throughout history is defended, built, taken care of, protected, and... And uh, all of that's expected now. It's not even uh, acknowledged hardly anymore. And so then, because it's so expected and so ingrained, we look and see, we just look and see the stuff that people, we focus on the stuff people we consider doing wrong, you know, in the world. And it's unfortunate, but um, but I, I can't wait to see that all turn around. And I think a site like this could be amazing for, uh, where we focus on the positive. We're not, yeah. I don't want to have too Thank many. Thank you. I don't want to have too many of these discussions about what's wrong. That's what right. we want to get away from on the site and start Thank focusing you. on how to grow the healthy stuff, you know, 
uh, and really build powerful people. Well, you and I both believe in that. The way to really uh, create the positive change is, first of all, hold up the highest model. Here's what it looks like when it's healthy. Here's what it looks like when you're on fire. Here's what it looks like when you're accomplishing. Here's what great sex looks like. Here's what all these things look like at greatness. And then when you're not there, you can at least see what to shoot for and how to get there. But this wallowing in the mire, the mud of the the, the ugly debate does nobody any good. Yes, and it reminds me of goal setting. Like this week, I've been working with a lot of clients, yeah. and I ask them what their goals are. And what do you want out of this week? What do you want yeah, today? Yeah. What do you want tomorrow? Let's get, get, get clear on this and see what you... And, uh, and I can tell when a client's mind is not focused properly, and we got to do work on this because this is serious programming in the mind, when they can tell me clearly what they don't want but have a hard time telling me what they want. They can tell me what's wrong, wow. what they don't want, and they'll lay, they, they don't even realize they're doing it. They'll labor the goal in terms of... I don't want to be X. That's my goal. Wow. And I'm like, well, then what do you want? Well, because yeah. you're only going to repeat what you focus on. Right. So whatever you say you don't want is what you're going to get. Yeah, because you make an image of what you don't want, and then you amplify it to fix it. But by amplifying it, it gets bigger in your mind. Therefore, it gets bigger in your life. And people who are stuck in that model, and they can't even focus on what they want, That's that's their mind is just going in the wrong direction. And we mm -hmm. got to start retraining that really quickly. And that's what the, a lot of the, the planet's doing right now. We're heavily focused on, on yeah, we got to acknowledge what's not working, but that's only a small part of the picture. We, how much time do we spend flushing out what will work, where we're going? Like on a map, if I'm going from, uh, well, we're in Romania. So if I'm going from Bucharest to Kiev or, or Nikolai, where he lives, in, which is in Ukraine, I got to know I'm in Bucharest and acknowledge it <laughs> and then i gotta know where nikolai is and see it pictured in my mind and make a map to it and but the end the really and it's not even the map to it it's the you gotta know that nikolai you gotta see it know it feel it and then once you've you flushed it out you go and you don't spend all day thinking about all the obstacles that can come right. up on your way to nikolai you yeah. just drive there and you do it and when an obstacle comes up you deal with it and then you got the next one and the next one and then as you get closer to Nikolai, you're kind of picturing it more in your mind, and it's getting more real in your mind. But you're still not there yet. Right. But in your mind, it's getting clearer. You're feeling it. So, oh, yeah. And then you start telling me about, oh, we're going to go to this store. We're going to go to this restaurant. We're going to see eat this food. I know this great coffee shop. We're going to get this hookah, and, or shisha, as they say there. And then pretty soon, it's becoming more real in my mind. And I, I'm starting to picture the positive aspects, and then pretty soon, I'm there. Yeah. And that's kind of how goals work. And we don't do it that way. Not what we do. Some people do. The successful people do. Well, and we don't even we don't even follow models we do in our normal daily life. Like if you were going to drive that drive, what do you do in your time? You're looking out your front your windshield. You've got this little tiny rear view mirror, but it's not even five percent of your view. You know, but we got people doing the opposite. They're spending ninety five percent of their time looking at the rear view mirror in this yeah. little tiny window to the future, and uh, you know, and so it doesn't driving down the street, looking over their shoulder, staring yeah. at the rear view mirror. Crash, crash, crash the whole way down the road. It's, it's crazy. You yeah. know, if you go into your future, looking at your past, you're only facing your future, but first, yeah. you know, it just, it doesn't work. So authentic man sounds like, well, based on what we were talking about, it's, mm -hmm. it's really a site. It's a pro uh, masculinity and femininity site in a, in a large sort of, of way, really building up both. Healthy it's man's good. life. Yeah, it's going to be developing men out, so we're we're in great relationship. And having feminine. fun. I want to go there. I want to I want to do some stuff I've always wanted to do. I want to tour a place that makes cigars and do a little video on that. Yeah. I want to go test drive a. Uh, uh, yeah, things that we were talking about was like yeah. discussions about longevity, health, nutrition. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the late looking for the latest research. What's uh, David Sinclair talking about with nutrition? What's uh, we could talk about different diets, keto diet, carnivore diet. We could even cover aspects of why the, the, the vegan diet is the, the good aspects of the vegan diet, even though I don't think it's the good long term. And building muscle. Building muscle. Um, <laughs> because all of these, they have a purpose and they, and they serve. And if you want to do, let's say you want to be vegan, what's the healthiest way you can do it, you sure. know? But uh, what, what are ways you can live longer at, a, at an older age and stay really uh, fit and, and active. What could, how, like, I'd love to do an article on the guy that was an 80 year old doing CrossFit and killing it and out doing guys right. in their twenties doing CrossFit, you know, I love it. you know, things like this. And it, it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and the lifestyle stuff, jumping out of planes and traveling to places sure. and having well, videos. And, and you and I bring a very different approach to many others of life, you know, both from goal setting to sex, to relationships. I think that guys will find eye-opening they'll have aha moments it'll be breakthroughs and i want to affect the culture this way eventually i hope we get some breakthrough books and and things that'll really 
impact the broader culture as well with a new idea of like, you know, just because here the truth is resonates with people. Yeah. The nice part is we speak something out and we don't have to convince people. They already know and it resonates. Yeah, the, the loudest complainers out there aren't typically going to be your buyers and they're, they're typically come and go. And the, the people that are really paying attention, your long-term clients that want to go deep and change their lives, they're not out there complaining. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's going to be awesome. Cool. I think I look forward to it. Um, yep. And uh, so to go ahead and bookmark that site now. Get you know Keep an eye on it. It's going to be growing. There's a lot of development to be done on it, but you know let's get started on that. And um, let's talk a little bit more about the Integrated Man Summit. You, you are one of the speakers there. It's the first weekend in December. It's coming up pretty fast. Uh, make sure you get your tickets, check out the link in the video. It's, uh, it's, it's a powerful, uh, I did it when I originally came up with the integrated man summit, the idea behind it was that I saw all these big conferences with all these speakers and a lot of the speakers, honest to God, were, you know, they weren't all exciting. They weren't all interesting and they would come speak for 30 minutes to a half hour and go. 30 minutes to a half hour ago and it was one after another and pretty soon your brain's just overloaded and you're tired and and I wanted to create a conference that was a little different I really wanted to ha- bring in people I really enjoyed having speak that have an uh, interesting presence that uh, bring some really value to your lives and we wanted to keep the amount of speakers down and have them speak every day and uh, so you'll be speaking three days in a row uh, uh, Robert Glover will be speaking three days in a row. Uh, Jonathan Turner, who is uh, a financial advisor that we love. Bringing his McLaren? Yeah, he's going to be bringing his, green McLa- his brand new green McLaren. He's got an orange and a green McLaren now. Jeez. And uh, he talks about you know how uh, millennials can really build a fortune in, yeah. in a healthy way. And he's really pissed off at all these financial advisors that give terrible advice just mm-hmm. to sell books and programs and make money. And, and the advice does not make you money or, or actually can lose you money. And so he just, he released a book. Uh, I don't have, remember, I don't have the title with me right now or the book with me, but great book to check out. He's going to come and talk about that. And he's literally shipping the McLaren from Hershey, Pennsylvania. And so he's not going to drive it in, of course. It's a long drive. Wow. And uh, so stuff like that. And we're going to just all have fun together and hang out, have a good time. And let's say the first day you talk about X, Y, and Z, and, and it's a great topic and everybody like mask, you know, the power of masculinity in men or something. And and people are at the break are like, hey, that was so cool. This was cool. You, it, it's going to inspire you to want to talk more the next day about going deeper maybe in that topic or changing your topics a bit or modifying based on the crowd. And we can you can really get deep with these guys mm-hmm. and really learn a lot. I mean, three days with him, three days with Glover, three days with me. And then we got all the fearless coaches are going to speak like uh, Sam Pond. A lot of you guys like Sam Pond. He's 63 now, killing it. Killing it with dating, women, his life, traveling the world, uh, lifestyle, adventure. So if you're a little older and you want a gentleman that's, that's, that said the best year of his entire life was, he's, he's had an amazing life, by the way, very, and, uh, but the best year of his life was last year. Mm. And this year's even getting better. And it just keeps getting better and better. You know, that's a guy to come see for mm-hmm. those of you that are like, oh, I'm 40 and my life's over. And I'm like, Dude, not I even started cool. at 40. I'm telling you, I crashed yeah. and burned. But everything started at 40. Walter 40. Russell said that man's, a great man's life really takes off at 50. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and Walter Russell had to be 93, I think it was. Uh, killed it all the way to 93. And uh, the um, and so that's, that's great stuff. And then we're going to have the other fearless coaches speaking too, all on how they became who they are and how they changed their lives in the face of adversity, you know. Anthony came out of, uh, you know, abject poverty, didn't have much money. He's always been broke, really bad money stories. Now he travels the world with us. Uh, you know, Josh, Matt, uh, they all have these amazing stories. So so if you really want, it's one of my favorite events because it's, I have so many friends there. It's bonding. We have amazing dinners and we're in Miami in a sexy town at a sexy uh, hotel, the Confidant Hotel and at, right by the beach. Then what are you waiting for? Get out there. This guy's going to be speaking. Get your ticket now. And uh, can you give a little bit? What are you going to be speaking about? Guys, I listen, I am. Uh, you got to come join us. First of all, I, I, you can look back in your lifetime and, and handpick just a few times that were catalysts for you, that were deal changers, that, that shifted everything in your life. This is when they happen. And they don't happen if you don't show up. Sitting back at your computer watching another set of videos, you know, is okay, but it's got to lead you to the action. This is the action. So you come and hang out. I have three topics I want to bring to you passionately. And again, we're going to learn together. And 
we, we may go really deep on these as we go. One is the masculine journey. And I, I've done this teaching so many times. And first of all, it gives hope for where you are because I've been there. I've lost a spouse. I've been through a bankruptcy. And I've, I start off as a nice guy. I had to find my voice in the world. And now that I have coached for 25 years and I've helped you know, work with so many hundreds of guys and started my own private therapy work as well, I want to tell you what's really working for men and how to map out what your stages of life are in your development. And you can catch up or be part of any, any one of them, but to understand where you are, what it looks like. And again, there's so many great places we can go. And, and so many times I hear about a guy say, Mark, talk more about that. Talk more about masculinity because there's a nobility that comes to it. And you'll come away feeling like the healing that has to happen among men in our culture is to be restored to the fact that being a man is a great thing. There's a nobility behind it, and I help you find it in this generation. Second thing is, one of the great things that comes out of an event like this is you're going to learn a lot, and you know that it can be a catalyst for you, but it isn't always. And one of the things is, how do you make um, change last? And I have developed a couple of systems that really take and make this lifestyle so that what you learn here today you can come away knowing that this is going to be my future. This is going to be my life. And it doesn't happen automatically. Your tendency is to fall back into patterns when you get back home. So I'm going to teach you something I call the 85 day pact. And it's a way to create um, a, a positive pressure on yourself that I've, I've gathered this from many people and done this. And guys have said, this is the thing that, that really got it for them. Um, you're going to create an accountability system for yourself and a daily checklist. That's easy to do, but by accomplishing it, you're going to become all of the things you learned 12 weeks later, it will be you permanently a part of your identity. It's a key part of it. So what I wanted to encourage you to do is everything you're going to get is going to actually facilitate long-term change with a couple of these tools. And finally, I do want to teach you these relationship things we've learned. Uh, first of all, I think it should be a book. I mean, I really, the the, the book would come out on this. I'm debating over, I, I bought the domain oneheartonemind.com because I like that idea. But in a sense, um, the result is, you know, the the 98% marriage success formula. I mean, it's like, it's that strong. What we're learning about these international, multinational relationships is breakthrough. It is unheard of. Nobody has this kind of statistic. We've documented it now consistently for 10 years. It continues to go on because there is a dynamic that happens and any relationship can adopt these three key components. We talked about one and a half of them today, sort of an overview. And I'm going to get into them because wherever you're in life, at some point you're going to want to spend some time going deep and having a relationship with somebody and you want it to be deeply meaningful, mutually satisfying, most you pouring into each other where you feel like you've known somebody all your life and they know you. And the number one adjective all of our couples say about each other, we're so comfortable together. Nice. I like you that. You want that. You want to wake up every day with your best friend and somebody you still can't get your hands off of. And uh, so with that combination, I'm going to show you what's happening because I believe when this becomes a book and I do the speaking tour, I think it's, you know, I don't want to say I'm the next John Gray, but this material deserves that. It really deserves to be the next men are from Mars, women are from Venus, because we need to fix the relationship model, because otherwise, why would you want one today? Yes, I agree. That's the problem. A lot of people aren't getting married and they're not moving forward. I mean, not because I actually don't believe that people don't want them. They just don't believe they're going to work. Yeah, well, here's what I do. Um, briefly, I do a survey, and I've done this for years, where I'll ask people, and you think about this now, I'll do it again at the event in a live format, but it's like, of all the married people you know, think about it, they could be your, from family to church members, community, business people, who's married? Who do you know is married? Out of all those marriages, how many would you say, I love that one so much, I'm envious. I wish I had a marriage relationship just like that. And every time I've done this survey, you're not going to be surprised, 65% of them say zero or one. Hmm. People don't even know what a good marriage looks like, so why would you want one? And how would you think you're going to have a better one? And so that's why we need a new paradigm to change the way it's approached and really go back to uh, our, what, are we, what are we calling our, our uh, ancestral model? You know, the two shall become one. And, and there's some lessons to be learned there. So Nice. That's beautiful. Um, so what are you waiting for? Come hang Again. out, man. I can't wait. Again, the link's in the video. Check it out. Uh, and, um, and yeah, I'll just meet you in Miami and he'll meet you in Miami and we'll all have a great time. 
Um, last year was a blast. It was one of my favorite events of the whole year, and I think this one's even going to be better. So with all that said, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. It was a pleasure having Mark on the podcast, and we're going to be uh, working on – we got this equipment here in Bucharest, and thanks to Cosman, the awesome editor we've got here, uh, we're going to get this set up uh, in L.A., and I want to get a, a mobile version I can take around, get, get you some really good speakers. And instead of having a lot of speakers, what I'd like to do is focus on quality, you know, some people that can really we can really go deep with and have a deep serious conversation about this stuff now um again with that said i hope you enjoyed the video make sure to comment below we're always watching those comments those comments are very important to us let us know what you liked about the video let us know what you want to know more about let us know if you're coming to tim's and or the integrated man summit we yeah. we we the lovingly acronyms. call it yeah we lovingly call it tim's and uh, if you get if you get a chance, check out the comments over the next few weeks we'll after do. the video comes out, we'll so that you can uh, and maybe and maybe he can respond to some of your comments directly too. Uh, by the way, what's your uh, website, your YouTube channel? Sure. What, what, let's, put, let's let these guys know what your information is. All right, right now, um, you want to know about my the core business of uh, the international marriage business I have? It's at dreamconnections.com. If you want to get hold of me, you can email me mark at dreamconnections.com. And if you want to check out our YouTube channel, there's a link there where YouTube channel partners over 800 videos. The YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash iDating success for like international dating, iDating success. And with that, it's just a great way to explore the world together and we look forward to supporting you. There's so much free stuff. And like you said, we believe in giving before we ask. And when we do ask, it's something we believe is of great value to pour into your life. So Look forward to hanging with you. This is I, I gotta tell you, I'm I'm honored. I will always say I was there as the first one to hear in the studio to use this cool stuff. So I'm happy <laughs> to help launch this inaugural coolness. Uh, he popped he popped the cherry. There um, you go. And uh, and so again, remember to comment uh, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and like the video if you like the video. Also hit that notification button. That's very important. I don't want you to miss any of this awesome content and uh, stuff that's coming down in the future, uh, future podcasts, future videos, and, so, and whatnot. And uh, with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video. I want to invite you to the Integrated Man Summit in Miami. Last year was amazing. This year, we're going to have Dr. Robert Glover, one of my favorite authors ever, the author of No More Mr. Nice Guy. Such a powerful book, changed so many lives. Mark Edward Davis, the owner of Dream Connection. This company is designed to help you meet women overseas and marry the, the woman of your dreams. And he's done an amazing job with it. Over 200 marriages and I think only two divorces since he started the company. Also, Jonathan Turner, financial advisor that helps you to build a work optional lifestyle. He'll be there with his brand new McLaren that he just purchased, kind of showing it off and just having fun with that a little bit. So come out if you want to see the McLaren and hang out with Jonathan and learn about how to really make money and save money. He's the person you want to meet with. And the fearless team. This includes myself and all the coaches. And like most events, we're not going to have a million speakers each day. We're going to have a few good speakers that go deep and really teach you some valuable content that you can take home and use rather than a bunch of garbage that just fills up your brain and confuses you. This event was a huge success last year and it's going to be a bigger success this year. And I know that you want to be there. So do yourself a favor and purchase your ticket now. I'll see you at the Integrated Man Summit. Make sure to say hi to me in person and remember, only the confident will fit.